The bombing of Guernica took place on the 26th of April, 1937, at the height of the Spanish Civil War. It was the first Luftwaffe exercise in total war, wherein civilians were targeted intentionally in what may be best described as an act of terror. These tactics were replicated en masse by both Allied and Axis sides in the Second World War, and many military historians consider the bombing of Guernica as practice for the inevitable coming conflict for the Luftwaffe, who were developing the tactic at the time. The Basque government is said to have put the estimate of dead at 1,652, while well, Russian observers to the hostilities tend to put the number around 800, although this did not take into account people who, who were trapped in the rubble who later died of their injuries. After the approximate three and a half hour aerial bombardment, which took place on a Monday, which was well known to be market day, the town lay effectively flattened. The only things left standing, according to a contemporary report, were a church, a tree which was a traditional symbol of the Basque people, and ironically a small munitions factory on the edge of town. The Spanish Civil War lasted from 1936 to 1939. It involved fascists known as nationalists under the direction of Franco versus Republicans, who were an effectively an umbrella of communists, anarchists, and a variety of centrists. Franco was supported by Hitler and the remnants of the Weimar Republic, which was the post-World War I German political system that allowed Hitler to come to power. In fact, the German division that bombed Guernica was known as the Condor Division, who unified Germany formally apologized to Spain in 1997. The Condor Division was ostensibly a German unit that was on loan to Franco. They worked to support Franco by providing air cover for his troops and also working on the development of tactics such as the total war first practiced at Guernica. This is a Luftwaffe incendiary bomb circa 1936. We can look at Guernica through the lens of race and cultural significance. The majority of Basque are Jewish, and the fascism of Franco attracted the attention of Hitler's national socialism at the beginning of the conflict. The chance to take out a Jewish enclave may have proved too much for Franco's ally Hitler to resist. And thus we have the bombing and firebombing of a Basque town on market day by German air crews and German air. Francisco Franco unfortunately won the Spanish Civil War and was a dictator there until his death on 20th of November 1975. The Spanish Civil War was nasty, fairly long, and brutal. It was unfortunately a testament to both Franco's determination as well as the state of the world in Europe that it was allowed to happen and it was allowed to be won by people who ended up on the wrong side of history. If one is so inclined, parallels can again be drawn between Spain in the 1930s and Syria or the Ukraine today. Volunteers from all over the world have poured into what most consider the right side of history. However, the powerful regimes and their backers appear to have the upper hand. The Spanish Civil War, and specifically the bombing of Guernica, made international headlines. Many hundreds of volunteers traveled to Spain to join the Republican forces against Franco's nationalists. One can draw many parallels between modern day Syria and the Ukraine. This was a full-fledged civil war, as messy and was in many fronts as modern-day Syria. Not only were there competing political ideologies, in this case Marxism and anarchy versus fascism and national socialism, but there was also a pretty hardcore religious component. The Basques, whose historical capital was Guernica, are predominantly of Jewish descent. They've been attempting to break away from Greater Spain for several centuries. The surrounding Spanish countryside is predominantly Catholic. The polarization and enmity reached a peak in the 1950s to 2011. Basque separatist group ETA resorting to a terrorism bombing campaign. The ETA apologized to his victims ahead of its dissolution in 2018. The map on the left depicts the military situation in early 1937, with nationalist forces in purple and republican forces in pink. The map on the right marks the location of Guernica. I can see little military value in bombing such a target apart from spite. Picasso, an ardent Republican, had already fled Spain and was living as an exile in Paris. Guernica became very famous as an anti-war image. It was exhibited around the world. Picasso gave instructions that had never been shown in the Museo del Prado. However, in 1992, nearly 20 years after Franco's death, it was moved there, which was very controversial in Spain. The painting depicts an enclosed space, possibly a bomb shelter or a basement. On the left bottom side is a dead or dying man with his arm outstretched. Above him is a terrified wailing lady holding a dead infant. Above her is a very distraught looking bull. To the right is a table, and above that is a screaming goose. A naked light bulb in the left of center appears to be one of only two sources of illumination. Below that is a screaming horse which appears to have been gored by the bull. Below the horse 
is a severed arm and hand holding a broken sword. To the right of that is a depiction of a woman coming down the stairs holding a lamp. To the slight right of her is a person throwing up their hands. Underneath them is a set of oddly proportioned fingers. There's typeface overlaying the center of the piece. And the horse's tongue resembles a dagger. The painting is a collection of organic shapes in an inorganic setting, a basement or bomb shelter in which the subjects are hiding from bombs. The piece is not quite monochromatic, as the type in the center is a very dull yellow. The painting itself is enormous, which when viewed is overwhelmingly stimulating and conveys the messiness of the chaos depicted. This approach also displays war as anarchic and jumbled rather than heroic and glorious. Much has been made of the bull and the horse that repeatedly appear in Picasso's works. In this case, it's possible that the bull represents Picasso himself, and the horse represents Spain and the people of Spain who are suffering in the war. I can think of no better way to look at some of the critical approaches surrounding Guernica and his creation than by looking at some of the propaganda posters that were in use at the time. This one obviously describes the Red Terror, which I think could be constructed as Marxism. This one could probably be seen to be some sort of budding globalization, anti-nationalistic thing. As could this one. The Western world sat back and watched a minority people and basically did nothing. We're doing the exact same thing today. Art and war have been intertwined since there have been art and war. And we fight for many, many different things racism, post-colonialism, differing political ideas, it's all there. I feel like the point that Picasso is attempting to make with Guernica is that these people are innocent and suffer. They're suffering because of anti-Semitism, they're suffering because of a different ethnic background, and they're suffering because they're just there. The innocents in war are the people who tend to suffer the most. Guernica was the basis for some relatively famous other works of art, such as this woodcut print by Heinz Kiewitz. And the Spanish Civil War as a whole captured imaginations through photographs like this, The Falling Soldier by Robert Capa, as well as For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway. This full-size mural of Guernica actually resides in Guernica, which despite Franco and Hitler's best efforts, was successfully rebuilt and is still full of Basques today. They still consider it their ethnic capital. I gave some serious thought to the artwork which I would show as a compliment to Picasso's I decided on a picture I took during my time in the service. In addition to being possibly the best picture composition-wise I've ever taken, it shows yet another face of modern conflict, which remains a pretty barbarous business. This was after a training parachute jump and three days of 24-hour operations that followed. I don't remember taking this picture, as I was in an advanced state of exhaustion, as was my fellow soldier. While we were in the States, we were also still training to return to combat constantly. A big part of what was causing major problems amongst the soldiers with families is that they were so often away from them. While Guernica shows the suffering of women, children, and other innocents, I hope that this picture shows the suffering of actual combatants, who in my experience just want to get back to those innocents and return to as normal life as possible.